Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. All settings are proper. All right. So, I keep getting this question always that, sir, you always keep telling, please do a comprehensive analysis, look at the overall chart, look at the entire chart, and then look at the dashas and the karkas. And well, what does it mean? What does it mean? Do a comprehensive analysis. So, what people generally think in astrology, because most of the times people come to YouTube astrology just by hearing of sun sign, moon sign, right? So they think your some sun sign is Leo. So you're very arrogant. You are whatever. I mean, you're, you're having leadership traits and so on, right? Or you're dominating or you want to control others, right? So, or they say, okay, your moon sign is this. Maybe this happens, that happens, right? But the thing is, then they come to astrology. They see videos. Then they think, okay, where is my, this planet X sitting in which house? Which sign it is placed? So, for example, they will see, uh, they will search, you know, astrology, marriage predictions or whatever, right? Then what do they find? They will always find Venus, right? So they will find Venus is the karka for marriage, uh, love, romance, relationships. And then what will they do? They will directly go and jump into Venus, right? So suppose a person has Venus in sixth house. Then what the person does is goes and sees a video. He sees Venus in sixth house. Oh my God, terrible. You'll never get married. You know, we'll have divorce or separation, blah, blah, blah. Of course, nowadays... Astrologers may not uh, say these things, you know, they may sugarcoat it a bit, but that's essentially what Venus in sixth house means, that this is what they think, right? So then what will happen? They will see, okay, next what I should see, seventh house of marriage. Which planet is in seventh house? Rahu in seventh house, divorce, Saturn in seventh, no marriage, Ketu in seventh, nobody knows, right? So these are the things that they will see. And then they will come to a conclusion. Okay, uh, my Venus is bad, but my seventh lord is not so bad. That means my marriage is bad plus not so bad. So mm -hmm. bad, not so bad, not so bad, bad. Maybe something, right? <laughs> so bad plus not so bad equals maybe <laughs> not so bad, right? So then what happens? They think that this is the situation that will remain lifelong, okay? So if somebody, a newcomer, comes and sees that his Venus is in the sixth house and his seventh lord is, um, suppose, in a friend sign, anywhere in the house, right? Then he says, okay, bad plus not so bad equal to maybe not so bad. And uh, so my whole life, my married life will be not so bad, right? So this is how people study astrology in YouTube, right? Now, this, this is not the correct way to study astrology. This is, this is very important because these things that, you, that we do in the initial days, like we see Venus, then we see seventh house, then when somebody becomes more uh, knowledgeable, uh, he understands that we also have to check the seventh lord, right? When somebody becomes more knowledgeable, then he understands we have to check the Navamsha. When somebody becomes even more knowledgeable, then you will see the Dharakaraka, you know, Jaimini principles or whatever, whatnot, right? So, therefore, what happens is, it's like an individual journey, right? We study individual things. But at, at, if, if we do like this, then what happens is, things become very complicated because we cannot answer any question. So, if a person asks you, how will be my married life? So, what do you see? Do you see Venus? Do you see a planet in 7th? Or do you see the 7th Lord? Or do you see the Navamsha? Do you see Venus in Lagna chart or Navamsha or the Bhava chart? Do you see a Dharakaraka? Do you, uh, what do you do, right? If a person asks you, when will you get married? That, that is relatively easier to uh, answer, of course. But suppose somebody asks you, how will be my entire married life? When will there be ups and downs in my married life, right? Uh, or it, it's the same with health or career or finance or whatever it's right so how do you answer such queries because then this thing does, does not work okay one planet is good another is not so good you know so 
not so good life. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. So first you have to understand, please be event specific in astrology. Do not be house specific. Do not be Karaka specific. They will come later, which means, what does it mean to be event specific? Event specific means that we ask real life questions about an event or a particular area of life of the person. Okay. So for example, marriage. Marriage or I mean, when when the person will get married or it can also be, uh, how is the married life you know, in the next 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years? Okay. So now when you become event centric, okay, event or area centric rather, okay, not just one event like wedding, one day it happens and then that's uh, over. If, if you become either event centric or area centric, so either wedding or marriage, the whole married life. Then astrology becomes easier. Then you get to connect the dots. Okay. So for example, if you say that, okay, uh, I just see Venus. I just see seventh house, right? Karaka specific, house specific. Then you cannot arrive at a conclusion. But now if you say, I, I want to know how will be the married life of this person. Then you will realize that there are many planets which will have their say there are many planets which will influence that same one particular area of life and then you can do a comprehensive analysis okay so if somebody says career what do you see do you see sun or 10th floor or whatever no it's not like that you have to see for marriage especially you have to see venus number one then you have to see the second house very important okay second house see second is the second house <laughs> Then, of course, nonetheless, you have to see planets in the seventh house. And, of course, the seventh lord. Then you got to check the Navamsha, right? Navamsha, where Venus is in Navamsha, where is the seventh lord? All the same things you have to check in the Navamsha. Then you got to check the Dharakaraka, right? Planet with the least uh, degree as per Jamie. So, when, when you become event or area centric, then you know which houses and which planets should I look, okay? And then, of course, uh, you know, so for example, if your second lord is badly placed and your seventh house is well placed, so that means after marriage, there can be problems when you have children, okay, for example. But if the seventh lord is only not well placed, then either you have children or not, the married life can always be in distress, okay. I mean, depending on the dashas, of course, okay. And you have to see the eleventh house, right, because eleventh house is the fulfillment of desire, right, so... Uh, people who have a decent second house, decent seventh house, but a bad 11th house may not have fulfilling relationships, right? Their marriage or family may sustain for the sake of sustaining, okay? But 11th house really gives that uh, fulfillment of desire where you feel that, yes, now I am happy, right? So therefore... When you talk of profession, you have to check the second house, sixth house, tenth house, eleventh house, right? Second lord, sixth lord, tenth lord, eleventh lord. And once you check all these, then what do you check? Actually, before doing this, you got to check something else, irrespective of any area of life it is. Either you want to check health or marriage or childbirth or career, money, whatever. The first thing that you should do, you should always check the ascendant. And try to find the nature of the person, the ascended lord, right? So that is where you start a comprehensive analysis. So the first step in comprehensive analysis is to see the ascendant, analyze the ascendant, ascendant lord, right? The nakshatra in your ascendant. What is your ascendant nakshatra? And where? what is the nakshatra of your ascendant lord? That also equally matters, right? And then, of course, we check... The Atma Karaka plant with the highest degree, we check sun, moon. These are like four fundamental things, right? Ascendant, sun, moon, and Atma Karaka. So they will tell you what is the inherent disposition of the person. How does this person think? What does this person value? What does this person ignore? What does this person not like, right? So these are very important things when you are doing uh, horoscope matching or synastry, Kundli Milan, Gun Milan, because without knowing the nature of a person, how will you know if you should stay with that person, right? Anyways, so nonetheless, after you do all this, then you become area specific. Don't just bluff around, oh, this plant is here, that plant is here. No, it doesn't work like that, right? 
be very event centric when, when uh, if you are an astrologer offering consultations uh, the client will ask you sir when will i buy a house will i be into real estate when will i get married so all the questions will be real life centric you cannot tell the client okay uh, sir, actually, your Venus is a bit bad, you know, your seventh house is a bit not so bad, you know, so it will be okay, okay, tick tock, like aapka. You, you can't answer like that, right? You have to give, give concrete answers. Then when you uh, become area centric, you do the next step. As I said you know, earlier, you see the houses and the Karakas, right? For 10th house, who, who are the Karakas? Mercury primarily, then Sun, Saturn. Some people also see Jupiter for, you know, name, fame and popularity rather. Not name, fame, sorry, popularity rather. So these are the things you see. And then the third step is you go and check the dashas, okay? Because one dasha will be running that will impact all areas of life. So how is a dasha lord or a planet whose dasha is going on impacting all these areas of life? That is what you have to judge, okay? So for example... Uh, if you see that a planet is in the sixth house, for example, you know, Mars is in the sixth house, <clears throat> and your Mangal Mahadasha has started, so it can mean to some extent that your career can go reasonably well because that's a um, uh, Artha house. But because sixth house is 12th to the house of marriage, the seventh house, then it can be a bit challenging for marriage. But does it mean that you will be divorced? Well, not necessarily, right. There are so many people who are running the dasha of the sixth lord or you know planet in the sixth. Does it mean that they are divorced in the dasha? Well, not not necessarily. You have to see where is the nakshatra lord placed. So uh, then then uh, you understand and on top you uh, see the transits. Okay, what are transits telling? Okay, so there are many videos that I have on my channel uh, which explains all these things you know like comprehensive analysis uh, of course this is the first video I have made explicitly on this topic hopefully but most of my videos they will always explain that why certain things are happening and why certain things are not happening even though certain very obvious placements are there right for example you know Venus in sixth why is the person getting married not in Venus Dasha in some other Dasha of course or Venus is in 7th, 7th Lord in 7th, why is the person getting divorced, right? Because you see video, you know, 7th Lord in the 5th or ninth or 11th or 2nd, you know, great placement, blah, blah, blah. And then the 6th Lord gets activated and there are some other difficult placements for marriage and then the person gets divorced. So you're going to have a tough time with people if this is how uh, your predictions come to be false, okay? So therefore, please do a comprehensive analysis. Doesn't matter which system of astrology you follow. You follow Parashari, you follow Jaimini, Nadi, KP, or whatever. You know that that is not my point here. That follow this, follow that. But your job is to look at everything and then give an answer. And you should be able to distinguish if a person asks you, "Sir, my." Seventh Lord is well placed, but my fifth Lord is not well placed. So what does it mean? Is it like plus minus? Will it cancel out? Can a good fifth Lord cancel out the negativity or a bad seventh Lord? Well, it never does actually, right? So a good fifth house will have other benefits, which will be there along with the uh, discrepancies, negativities or shortcomings of a good seven, of, of a bad seventh house, of course, right? So therefore, please be area centric and not just planet or Karaka centric. Okay, otherwise your predictions will end up in a disaster, and people will uh, lose faith in you, and you know they will lose faith in astrologers, and they will lose faith in the science of astrology ultimately. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe to it down below, and if you liked this video, then please click the thumbs up. And share it with somebody who is not knowing the importance of a comprehensive analysis. All right. And if you want a consultation from me, you can always go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.